Hey, how you doing today? I hope you're well. So, I'm going to read to you the article I wrote um, rebutting an article in, on the American Institute for Economic Research's website by a man named John Tamney. It's called, The Mugging of TikTok Should Embarrass Every Sentient American. Sentient. Uh, okay. I think... Um, most Americans qualify as sentient, although I suppose the ones who are in a coma or who are basically human vegetables don't, but otherwise I think we're all sentient. Not necessarily all in terms of the in terms of uh, Tamney, I mean intelligence, but uh, yeah. Anyways, this is Mr. Tamney. I hope you were able to see that properly. On August 6, 2020, John Tamney posted an article on AIER, or the American Institute for uh, Economic Research, attacking Trump's method of dealing with the security threat posed by TikTok. This article, as I said before, is a response to that. Um, you can get the links in the article, which I will provide a link to down below. The U.S. government has been threatening action against TikTok and WeChat for a while now, and other companies, to be honest, some of which they've already taken action on. Um, even companies on the U.S. stock ex exchange have not been immune. Um, Trump issued an ultimatum in which he stated that TikTok will be blocked in the U.S. by around September 15th, 2020, if it isn't sold. Now, as an update, the Microsoft deal fell through. And the Oracle deal that replaced it appears to be a fa big fat failure since they wouldn't achieve what Trump wants, which is basically that the Chinese government would have no way to access TikTok's data or WeChat's data or anything, whatever. But this is about TikTok, okay? Um, so as a result of this failure on the part of both Microsoft and Oracle to secure a deal for the sale of U.S. assets of TikTok, um, the deadline to ban TikTok has been pushed back to November 12th. He, uh, Trump is concerned about the potential of this company, ByteDance, based in Beijing, China, to harvest data and voluntarily or not give it to the Chinese government and or the Communist Party. Now, for more information, I did include a video which will give you some information about both TikTok and WeChat. Microsoft had asked Trump's administration via Trump for permission to buy the American assets of TikTok if the go-ahead had been given without following the normal protocols for a merger or acquisition. This would have constituted a substantial abuse of power by both Trump's team and Microsoft, which was once sued as a monopoly. Since both Microsoft and Oracle have not been given approval for their plans, the plan to protect the U.S. from Chinese spying is again delayed. To be clear, the U.S. government has the right to force things like this, and I provided a link to that information. The question some people are asking is not just, is this legal? It is. But, how will the U.S. Treasury get a cut of the sale? Aside from taxation, I have no idea. Microsoft was willing to give the Treasury some money. Is that a bribe to make sure the transaction is was approved? I don't know. Ow! Uh, sorry, my cat just walked on my bare leg with his claws, and that hurt. Especially since I'm allergic to cats. I'm not thrilled with the idea of the U.S. government playing the heavy with foreign companies, which might discourage companies from other countries from coming here too, but might also cause the Chinese government to seek sneakier ways to collect data on Americans, especially those in key positions, or even find ways to access their accounts, since many, many, many... Millions of users are naive, if not stupid, about passwords. Once upon a time, I was very stupid about that, too. I'm going to just segue here for a minute. I used to be on what are called bulletin board systems. I don't think there are any left these days, except for maybe private ones. But uh, I and other people around the world uh, ran bulletin board systems or BBSs on our computers. People would dial in one person at a time to take advantage of the facilities that were offered on my website. We had uh, downloads and uploads. We had 
conversations. We had text files that you could read. There were games. There was even an amateur uh, counseling service that some of my users helped to provide. Um, so, anyways, um, when I first got into BBSs, I used the same password on every website. I didn't, you know, I was nobody. I didn't think that there would be any reason why anybody would, would want to, you know, get into my accounts. Well, I went on to this one website, uh, sorry, BBS by a particular person, and he then found out which websites I, or sorry, <laughs> BBSs I frequented, and he used that password on those BBSs, and lo and behold, since I only used one password, he was able to get in. He posted nasty things in my name, and uh, basically, you know, I don't know what his deal was exactly. He eventually apologized to me, but uh, it it was not cool. I mean, I was able to um, save my reputation, as it were, as much of a nap reputation as I had at that point in time. Um, but you know, I I wasn't I was no, nobody. I I didn't have a special position in society. I wasn't rich. Didn't have a a job at a, a sensitive company or anything like that. Was, but he just he wasn't you know like a professional hacker. He was just taking advantage of my naivety. And lots of you people are super naive about passwords. Okay, so. Getting back to the article, okay? One government employee using the same password on TikTok and other Chinese apps will signal that their work password might be the same or give clues to what it might be. The same can be said if you take photographs of your workspace. Some people use things around them that they can see to help remind them of what their password is. So pictures of your workspace, if you're using passwords based on your workspace, a big no-no. With modern password cracking software, most simple passwords are a snap to figure out. Until humans change politics, economics, culture, and our behavior in general, this is the sad reality of things. I'm just surprised that foreign nations haven't banned U.S. companies that are known to be in bed with the U.S. government for espionage and or surveillance purposes. Should the president be able to do things like this? I have my doubts. It reeks of royal decree. I thought we got rid of kings a couple hundred or so years ago. Presidents have been slowly increasing the power of the executive branch bit by bit since before I arrived on this planet over 50 years ago. So maybe there are still kings of America. The U.S. isn't the only country to be concerned about TikTok. India has banned it due to its refusal to be held responsible for uploads of child pornography and illegal content, for example. India uh, has, or at least at that time, had 39% of TikTok's users, and they have banned almost 60 other Chinese apps. The problem is they can't force all their citizens to remove TikTok, WeChat, Hello, Sharing IT, UC Browser, the Club Factory, and everything else out of China. Personally, I would not knowingly use a program from China, Russia, and several other countries for fear of illegal data collection, hacking, social engineering, etc. And I would never use a Chinese anti-malware program. I'm also iffy about Chinese hardware. But that's harder to avoid in today's marketplace. The U.S. already banned hardware from China, Chinese Huawei and ZTE. India and the U.S., again, I, I, this is another link I put in there about uh, the, this issue. India and the U.S. aren't the only countries worried about Chinese software and hardware. So, what's wrong with China? Well, there's criminal activity. What? Criminal activity in China? No way! It's a communist state! They can't have criminal activity! Everything's controlled by the government! They have China. They have Chinese triads. They have corruption in the government. They've got all kinds of criminal activity, legal and illegal. I mean, according to their laws, not ours. A common problem with Chinese companies is that they do not respect copyright and trademark rules of other countries. Counterfeiters have flooded many markets with clever forgeries, including the antiques market. My uncle, an antiques ex expert, told me about forged antique glassware so good it can even fool experts. 
Some of you may remember that in 2007, Chinese companies put melamine, a plastic compound, into the food of pets in order to trick the tests into showing a higher than actual protein amount. In 2008, it was discovered that they were putting melamine into Chinese baby formula, resulting in several babies dying of kidney failure there. Doctors at that time did not know that melamine can combine with uric or cyanouric acid to form crystals that block the ducts of the kidneys, leading to eventual failure. So imagine, you're feeding your child formula, which by the way, I don't recommend it. If you can do breastfeeding, your, your baby will be much better off and you'll have a much stronger immune system. <sighs> can you imagine how you feel? The problem with the use of melamine continues to this day in China, and Chinese manufacturers are also noted for adulterating other pro types of products with illegal, even dangerous substances, including human food, baby products, massage creams, lotions, salves, and balms, and more. Chinese companies are also involved in the adulteration of pure honey with corn syrup and other liquid sweeteners in order to increase volume and thus profits. They ship their adulterated honey through companies in countries that do not have an import restriction ban, or ban, sorry, in order to get the honey into the U.S., Europe, and elsewhere, as well as using shell companies and, and uh, companies that are cooperating with them in the U.S. to knowingly distribute this adulterated honey. Now you say, well, what's the big deal? Well, there's a, there are some differences between honey and uh, other types of sugar, so you should probably look that up. The U.S. is flooded with this honey, as told in Netflix Rotten Series one, uh, series Season 1 episode, Lawyers, Guns, and Honey. Sounds like a song. Oh, wait, wasn't there a song called Lawyers, Guns, and Money? Uh, maybe that was the, the Eagles. They also continually develop new techniques to trick tests that detect the adulteration problem. China has even made a huge dent in the garlic industry by using prisoners to peel garlic for overseas sales. But we can't exactly blame all of this on the Chinese government. Clearly, there are criminals at work here, flying below the radar, and probably bribing corrupt officials. Indonesia has also had terrible problems with adulterated, even rotten food, as well as other products, but since most of that never makes it beyond neighborhoods, we never hear about it overseas. I knew about it because... Sorry, I know about it, <laughs> because I lived there for 15 and a half years and regularly saw news stories about it. And I mean, like, there was a guy who would take rotten milk, or, you know, spoiled milk, and he would, um, he would add flavoring to it and sugar to it, and he would freeze it as popsicles to sell to children. There was a guy who was putting textile dyes into um, tempeh to make it look more, more appealing to people, because apparently people didn't like the natural color of tempeh enough. Um, there was um, stories of people who were providing liquefied uh, vegetable, uh, sorry, like um, chili pepper sauce. And in order to increase the volume, they would put rotten fruit, vegetables and fruits in it, or even rotten tomatoes. Um, so there'd be a variety of things in there that were, that, you know, bad. Um, and a lot of other stories. Um, Textile dyes was very common. Uh, rotten food was very common. There was one com one restaurant. They would go to the local dump and s and uh, search through the garbage for discarded food, which they would then take back to their restaurant, cook, and sell. And in a nod to the corruption of Indonesia, the officials found out about it, went to the restaurant, told them, naughty, stop doing this, with this is we're giving you a warning. Oh wow! You think they're gonna follow that warning, hey? All their profits were based on that. So I mean, they were making huge amounts of money for what they were doing. So they went away, having slapped the people on the wrist. The people immediately went back to it and were shut down. Fortunately. Okay, so in the race to find a SARS-CoV-2 vaccine, oh, by the way, it isn't called COVID-19. That is a disease. SARS-CoV-2, or SARS-2 if you want to be simpler, is the virus. Chinese hackers are hacking competitors, NGOs, and dissidents, and more. That's another link for you. Governmental activity. It's another problem here. The Chinese government can legally demand that any Chinese company release all data to it, so it's actually easier to do than in the U.S. and Europe, too. 
They have a world-class hacking team that disrupts companies, elections, governments, and more on a daily basis. As with other countries, including the U.S., they engage in financial manipulation in order to gain a foothold of power in foreign nations and commit espionage in order to destabilize other countries for one reason or another. They have been linked along with Russia and Iran and North Korea. With attempts to destabilize the U.S., Australia, and other nations through cyber terrorism, social engineering via fake news websites and social media, and hacking, China also has some of the most advanced artificial intelligence algorithms and is almost neck and neck with the U.S. Link, click here. No, I'm just kidding. It's down. It's it's in the article. In fact, when it comes to tech, China rivals many others uh, legally and through espionage. Then there are all the internally nasty things they do, like taking over, persecuting, and murdering the Buddhists of Tibet while transmigrating Han and Hui Chinese, persecuting, imprisoning, and murdering the Uyghur Muslim minority, transmigrating Han Chinese to other parts of China is done in order to increase their overall control of the country. It results in conflict, cultural disruption, displacement of locals, and increased poverty in some areas. And there's a long list of other human rights violations that makes the U.S.'s human rights violations look pretty weak in comparison. Yes, we are guilty, too. They even participate with the North Korean government in human rights abuses of both workers and people fleeing the country. The Chinese government also has border conflicts and disputes with several countries around it, including India, Taiwan, Kashmir, currently divvied up between it, India, and Pakistan, the Philippines, Japan, Bhutan, and around 12 other countries. Winnie the Pooh and the President too. Now, don't get me wrong. Xi Jinping is very smart. He's got a major plan, and I'm impressed with the guy. But China's President Xi Jinping, or I'm sorry if I'm slaughtering your name, sir, Epitomizes diplomacy, and he is a powerhouse. He hates being called that name, by the way, Winnie the Pooh, and engages in what one might say is very typical behavior politically for the Chinese. And it's not just smiling, right? Okay. Except for if you mention Winnie the Pooh. If you call him Winnie the Pooh, well, he's banned Winnie the Pooh in China, so you'll be in trouble. Because of the influence of Confucius and the principle of harmony, which includes saving face for oneself and others, Asians are often more suited to diplomacy than us brash, confrontational Westerners, who they tend to look down upon because we can't seem to control our our emotions, restrain our desires, or behave in a polite, civilized fashion. Stealth and subterfuge are always preferable when possible to direct confrontation. Behind this facade, though, he is an extremely intelligent, capable man, possibly a genius, and certainly ruthless in not only gaining the supremacy of China, but also securing his own power. He had Chinese law changed to make him the president for life, which reminds me of what Hitler did before he started attacking Europe and formed the Axis powers with Russia, Italy, and Japan in World War II. They give financial aid to countries, and then, when a country defaults, they get what they wanted in the first place via the defaulting clause, often a strategic port. They'll even buy them. In addition, countries that lack the ability to build their own infrastructure can have Chinese labor and machines build it. Well, if you have Chinese labor doing all your work for you, expect that they're going to build it in a way that's going to help them. In theory, if a country is doing well and China wants a place or resources stated in the default clause, they will destabilize that country enough to get it. I mean, heck, America's done it. Other countries have done it. Why not China? If China, sorry, China is digging its claws into many other countries in various ways, using the Machiavellian tricks of Western nations and probably Sun Tzu's The Art of War. Not that a lot of other countries aren't guilty of the same thing. This man, visionary and authoritarian leader, is at least the face of China until he dies, if not the driving force to make it the dominant world power. Will it be any better or worse than the U.S.? We shall see. 
but it is inevitably gaining power and allies worldwide and sometimes foreign policy helps it to do that by forcing countries in need of help to turn to China when other doors are closed to them. Indeed, some countries' governments have made public statements of support for China and of backing away from the U.S. for not helping them. Kind of sounds like blackmail. You either give me financial aid or I'm going to go to China and let them put me over their barrel. Yeah, great. Woo, woo. Okay, so here's, a, here's some pros. Unified for workforce. One thing that China has that most other countries lack, forced unity. China in many ways and for many purposes can muster a large portion of its population to accomplish things in days or weeks that most other countries would be hard pressed to accomplish in months or years. Because of communism, China can quickly and efficiently divert resources, human and non-human, to get things done on a scale and with speed that is astonishing and impossible in most other countries both because of laws and the reticence of your citizens to unite against it. Are there casualties? Of course! But just like tourists ignore the human costs of building the Great Wall of China, they will eventually ignore these too. So, Tammany's condemnation. John is not happy with the way that the, the Trump's administration is dealing with this, from the threat of economic sanctions to bans, forcing a sale of U.S. assets to American companies or shutting them out of the U.S. as they have Huawei and ZTE, much less a sale to the nearly already mon uh, nearly monolithic Microsoft and or Oracle or Google. I bet they're next on the list. He claims it's shameful, and we should all be ashamed, if we're sentient, that is. His emotional response to the efforts of the U.S. administration to protect its citizens from data theft by the Chinese government is naive, at best. So let's talk about security for a minute. First of all, hacks of major corporations, utilities, governments, and even spy agencies around the world have peppered the news for quite some time. Yet John sarcastically ridicules this move as, in effect, who cares about ch children's data and privacy, and how could it possibly have a negative impact? What? Do you live, like, in a cave on top of a, a mountain on another planet, John? <sighs> well, first of all, let's keep in mind that children are highly vulnerable to pedophiles and their psychological grooming tactics to turn them into willing sex servants. And then there's the international abduction of children for sale as slaves and sex slaves, as well as torture, imprisonment, and murder. And let's not even talk about other ways that children can be indoctrinated on the web. Good Lord, man! Use your brains! You had your head in the economics books for too long. Secondly, children are almost universally naive about their privacy and data, having become comfortable from a very young age with internet access, and many hope for fame as YouTubers, TikTokers, and more. They don't understand how to spot a scam, a website laden with Trojans, exploits, malware, and other bad things, when they're being taken advantage of, or even when why they should keep some things about themselves a secret. This means that profiles can be built on billions of children over the years to the point that artificial intelligences will know these kids better than they know themselves, allowing them to be targeted by marketing, subversive forces, espionage, con conversion, and more. You name it. They probably got a file like a, thick, you know, like a foot thick on me. Very recently, hackers managed to access high-profile Twitter accounts. And, so, and there's a link. Click here. No, I tricked you. It's in the article. And secure an unknown amount of bitcoins from followers of those accounts, committing identity fraud, wire fraud, and, re and relieving those citizens of their cryptocurrency, which is, by its design, almost impossible to trace. Admittedly, the hacker used social engineering, too, by appealing to people's greed, with each hacked account saying, I'm giving back to the community. All bitcoins sent to my or our account below will be doubled and returned to you up to a maximum of $50,000. $50, Holy Moses, what a deal! <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I wonder how many bitcoin rich people just lost $50,000 thinking naively that they'd end up with $100,000? I feel sorry for these people who lost all of their savings because there were some. This is only the tip of the iceberg.
Regular people often feel that there is no reason anyone would want to hack their accounts or computers, like I just talked about earlier. Yet the truth is that criminal spies and other bad actors and even angry people will back will hack accounts and computers for reasons that regular people won't consider. They will use your account to post false reviews, likes and dislikes, attack people's reputation, commit fraud, theft, uh, to steal your identity, collect your data, and sell it on the dark net, and many other things, and some of which can have severe repercussions for those regular people that range from being banned from websites, games, and services, to facing civil and criminal charges, to loss of employment, theft of data and wealth, and much more. These criminals use it as a mask to hide their activities behind. That's all there is to it. It doesn't matter if you're rich and famous or poor and unknown. Your account is valuable to these people. The fact that John brushes all these reasons aside and more shows that he does not at all understand the nature of computer and into internet security and what criminals do, and is not qualified to comment on this aspect of the Trump administration's reasons for banning Chinese software because, yes, if a company is Chinese, the government will be able to get access to all of their data, even if ByteDance doesn't want to cooperate. We're not talking about a democracy, we're talking about an authoritarian government that plays by a different rule book than we, at least publicly, have in dem democratic nations. But well, secretly, the U.S., Germany, and several other countries have engaged in illegal data collection, both domestically and internationally. The value of data. John tries to downplay TikTok's value by making it seem like it's the playground of children, but the truth is that adults worldwide use it too, and some are famous. It's a major platform to increase exposure for major players like Ariana Grande, Britney Spears, Arnold Schwarzenegger, yes, I know he's old, Billy Ray Cyrus, and so many more. China deals in information because information is the news cur new currency for many, and you can rest assured that what the Chinese government... <laughs> What the Chinese government thinks about privacy of information isn't the same as we'd like. If you can collect personal data on people from all walks of life that gives you a lot of leverage publicly and privately, and some of it can be used to make or break people. Well, you. I suppose you don't remember how Vanessa Williams lost her Miss America crown. Or, well, she kind of had to, you know, was forced to give it up, but, you know, she lost it. Because she had posed nude for a photographer who promised the photos would never leave the studio and wouldn't reveal who she was. And then, when she won, he sold them to Penthouse. Hmm. Ethics much of a problem for you? If that could happen, what secrets can an AI discern from data taken from Chinese software and hardware? How many lives might it ruin, and how might it be used to influence policy and elections worldwide? If you can amass huge amounts of data on each citizen online, and even those who aren't online but are being tracked by systems like traffic cameras, postal service sorting machines, license plate cameras, smartphones and tablets, computers, webcams, surveillance cams, and more, you can also amass a lot of money and power. John doesn't seem to understand this either, which is a bit odd for an economist not to recognize how information can earn money and power. Perhaps he's just ignorant of it? Okay, so from a New York Times email I received today, well, at the time of the writing of this article anyways, Chinese security forces have used WeChat to spy on and intimidate members of the Chinese diaspora. Chinese-backed hackers regularly try to steal sensitive digital information about Americans and secret business information of American companies. Take it a step further. Access to the right data gives hackers not just access to personal data, but access to smart devices, cars, computers, mobile phones, coffee makers, oh, refrigerators, homes, industrial robots, door locks, and more. Oh my! What might an evil hacker do with that, aside from rob your candy dish? So the laughable thing is that all data that is thus far accessible via TikTok can end up in the hands of the Chinese government no matter what happens. The only difference will be whether it, there's an end date or not, and whether any future owners of TikTok inside and outside the U.S. can delete any backdoors into the system that the Chinese government could use to continue to harvest data. 
from what I know of security, which is more than the average person but less than the experts, this is a daunting task for any team because the back door, Trojan, and other ways in can be hidden in software and even hardware. Worse yet, even security experts make mistakes. The Chinese are innocent victims? All this time we've heard from angry Americans led around by fast-typing pundits that the Chinese don't make anything. Huh. I haven't heard of that for a long time. What I've heard for many years now is how China is becoming a powerhouse, that it threatens American domination, and that a lot of companies are playing ball with China in order to take advantage of their workforce while the cost of labor is still low there. But it's going up, because Chinese people are becoming seduced by all the things that new prosperity offers. Furthermore, who would care? Says he. Uh, I do, for one, and there are lots of other people who care, you foolish, foolish man. Many others would care if it were explained correctly to them. There is the theft of ideas and products. He does make a valid point about how many famous people, and he names a few, have innovated on existing products that they sometimes stole the ideas of, Edison, anybody? In order to produce new technology. And TikTok seems to have uh, been a new product, not a stolen one. The real threat, okay? In reality, it isn't a problem with just TikTok. <laughs> and or WeChat, nor even Chinese software and hardware, nor even China. Spy agencies around the world have been exposed for engaging in the illegal collection of private data on citizens of their own and other countries. The U.S. is not innocent in this matter, and in fact, should probably have been charged for crimes against the world a long time ago, except... That's right. They hold veto power in the U.N. and are thus immune from the power of the U.N. along with China, France, Russia, and the United Kingdom. How China got on that list, I don't know, but good job, China. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big boys. Many companies that provide services online and off collect data and sell it, and it is stated in their terms of service. Other companies do it illegally, not revealing that they're taking your data and selling it, or worse, unless they get caught. And those companies don't all exist in Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, and other nations that are considered security risks. Does the U.S. protecting itself from data theft really have to do with protecting its citizens? I doubt it. It's trying to protect national security while simultaneously engaging in the same espionage activities. For the average citizen, this means that we have to be concerned about many nations and companies taking our data and using it for legal and illegal purposes, with or without our consent. Because, let's be honest now, who reads those terms of service? That's why they make them so long! Oh my gosh! Companies generally make them long and boring, if not full of hard-to-follow legalese, and that discourages a huge number of people from reading them at all. And some people look at it and they're like, eh, it doesn't apply to me, it's just online. Well, not really, it can be applied to you. The Chinese are no more or less evil than the people of other nations. It is individuals in the lead who push people increasingly in the direction of evil behavior. If we're going to be fair, we should be looking at this issue in full. The real problem is human nature, and politicians have long been dominated by people who seem to be self-serving. In conclusion, 